I think we made five grand in a day one time. Six, seven hundred customers that we've served already. It was 102,000 out the door. 120 trash bins in three hours. Hi, I'm Jose Paguada. I'm Ken Murillo, and we're founders and owners of GI Bins. So we franchise this company. Got a couple of them out there already. Three actually now. So yeah, we started uh, GI Bins. It came to my head. Um, during COVID shutdown, got a little bored and I was working construction and then I still was doing a lot of soft washing, pressure washing, driveway cleanings. Anything I can get my hands on as a side gig for two years before we got together and put GI bins together. So um, I met Kenny through our boys uh, wrestling program and we knew each other already. And then I hit him up for a buddy of mine that was uh, raising money for his dad's surgery and was selling food. And we went and got some tamales together and discussing business, his business. He owns a, another business outside of GI bins. And I was telling him about this idea that came to my head and we just T kept talking about it did a demo for him at his place and yeah he brought this idea to my attention and i was like you know what you know how long i've owned a trash can i was like i don't and i never washed it before in my life you know i being being an active military i was stationed in all different places so you know i didn't have the same trash can the whole time but not one time did i clean it and if it was dirty if it stunk i just pushed it outside and eventually the stench would go away but he was telling me about this. He showed me this big old contraption and I'm like, man, I don't know. He's like, you know what? Just let me come over and clean your trash bin one time. He came over and he did it with like a little, a regular power wash. And uh, I was like, man, this thing, this is clean. And it smelled good too. So we just went on and about two weeks later, I went to my wife and I was like, man, we need our trash can cleaned again. You know, it's, it's getting dirty. And I'm like, man, if, if I'm thinking that, how many other people are gonna think that also? So then I called up Jose, I was like, hey, what do we need to do? Let's take it to the next level. We went ahead and we finalized the LLC right away. We put both their names on it. It really confirmed it when I had a, a lady that she said that she, her and her husband cleaned their trash bins in their front lawn and all the debris and nastiness came out of the trash can. And we read that there was up to 172 or 75 types of bacteria inside of a trash can that nobody ever knows about. It's just sitting there. And they had a little five pound dog and it got into the water, the debris from cleaning their bin. They said they picked up the trash, the bigger stuff, but they left everything else there. The dog got sick. From the types of bacteria that you're mixing, it creates like a blue green algae and you can actually leave that on the ground, which is it can kill an animal within 24 hours. It can harm kids too, playing in it. You'll get them really sick. So when we started looking into that, you know, I started doing some more research about what we had to do to protect ourselves with starting this business. You know, it's all fun and games to say, oh yeah, let's just do it. and not do your homework and your research about it. I found out that if you're not processing the water from the, all the wastewater you're building up from cleaning bins all day long, um, you need a waste hauling permit in the state of Michigan, and which is majority across the country, you need a waste hauling permit. But because we had our filtration system that we can process with all this system, you can actually hear it right now, it's working. So it's taking it from the hopper, going right through the vacuum recovery system, and it goes through a 50 micron and 20 micron, pumps it into your waste holding tank, which is the thing in Michigan. You can't haul it in an open top container. So in the hopper, it can't be held in there. So once we transfer it into there, when we run out of water, let's say I'm, I've done 100 bins already on my route, and I'm running low on water, I can just hit our recycle switch, plug it on, and you can see they're actually kind of dirty right now because Kenny's been cleaning bins already um, and it's they're doing their job. That's why they're dirty. But if you look at the water, it's clean. I mean, it's it, it, there's nothing in it. We've actually done multiple tests, did water samples. Um, pH levels came back great. It took out all the oil out of the water because there's people throw oil in their trash can and then it just stays in there you know so we have a oil and phosphate filter for that we have a five micron for that carbon filter is very important here in michigan i know it is across the country too um the carbon filter takes out all the bad stuff out of the water because you're running it at high temps anywhere between 150 up to 200 degrees you can actually release those bad 
particles from your water back into the air if you're not treating it. So that's what the carbon filter does. And then it goes through another five micron filter as well. So on a single day, you know, we can clean up to three, 400 bins with one load of water and recycling it. We didn't have it in place. We'd be putting bad water either into a waste treatment plant, which is costing us money, which is, I think there's a legal limit you can dump per day at a treatment plant like in Grand Rapids. I think it's like 500 or 600 gallons a day up to, you know, four or 5,000 gallons a week. With that being said, we don't have to do that because we're evaporating it and we're burning it off into steam. And that's really what sets us apart. I mean, we have a bunch of great lakes and a bunch of rivers and creeks, and we don't want to be the cause of, you know, putting that into the environment. So with that being said, we try to be as a true environmentally friendly as possible. On a good day, I can start with 300 gallons. I can add more though, but on a good day, I can start with 300 gallons. By the time I finish my day and my route, we may have 60 to 70 gallons left. I'll process it, transfer it into the other tank, and then just fill it up, top it off with new water again. So with that being said, you know, we're, we're not releasing any of this nastiness back into the environment. We're actually taking care of it. Well, that bypassed the waste hauling permit. We didn't have to take a class and all that. But it's nice not having being in business and not costing you to be in business. If it was, if we were in this business and we had to dump water, we'd be dumping up to 12,000 gallons a week. And that it's $150 a dump. Do you know about this equipment beforehand? Well, I had done some research, yes. Um, and I found that this one was probably the best one. We've definitely made some improvements along the way. So we work really close with the manufacturing facility and, and they, done a re really good job helping us improve it better to work more efficient for us and and for them too because you know they're they want to put out a good product and they don't want to be it the last thing you want to do is release something and then not be functional and then therefore that's all lawsuits start to mm -hmm. nine yards besides the uh, filtration system another thing that takes us or that sets us apart from any competitors out there is the fact that we run year round we have another system that's on a trailer um, that allows us to, to run year round. So even when it's freezing weather out, we're still out there. Um, trash cans still get dirty in, in the winter time. They might, may not smell as much, but they still get dirty, especially, you know, after that Thanksgiving dinner and that Christmas dinner, you know, you get all those leftovers that were just thrown in there. That's so, and then if you look over to the side over here, you know, we don't only do trash bins. We also do anything that a power wash company can do we're able to do. We just like to specialize in the in the trash bin industries too, because not everybody is doing it. The trash industry is very big. I mean, it's a $325 billion industry right now. It's went up since before COVID. When you first started out, did you guys start out with this truck or did you start out just like pressure washing? When we very first started, we started out with, he had his own personal truck and I had a personal truck and we both pretty much sold those to the to GI Benz and we bought the trailer that we had that he pulled around with his truck. As the trailer has the same exact equipment as this and we started off with that and then as we grew we needed more and more equipment so this was our next big step right here uh, to get th this is what I wanted at the beginning. Yeah. He was like no no I got my truck we want a trailer. I wanted the truck because I thought it looked cool you know being able to drive this thing around and and now I I like it a lot. I don't know if, if he still likes his trailer, I, I but <laughs> I, I, it is a lot more practical, especially more. in those residential yeah. areas to be able to turn around in the cul-de-sacs and it's safer. I mean, you're not as long. Our truck and trailer is probably 34 foot long together. This is like 22 foot long. So yeah, we, we have this, we have the truck and the trailer. And then we also have another pickup truck that pulls our fleet trailer. Yeah that allows us to do any any type of pressure washing with that too. The only difference is with our fleet trailer is we don't have hot water in that, but that, that's to come soon. Can I ask how much you guys invested to get started? I mean, the, the vehicles, I mean, the vehicles that we had were, were already paid off, but you still count those as investments. So the vehicles were probably about combined about 60,000 and then the trailer itself that one was he knows the numbers for that like think nine it was a hundred and two thousand out the door at the yeah, time it that's just, with tax and everything so that same model again right now it's about 109 so it's gone up but with that being said too we had the fleet trailer and, I, and with the pressure washers the tanks and all the parts and the reels and everything we're about twenty five thousand yeah investment so we we were fortunate that we didn't start from scratch because stuff that we had that we had accumulated like the vehicle 
vehicles, the tra- the first fleet trailer, the pressure washers we had already. Being that I was already doing it also before GI Benz, it was already there. So we weren't starting from scratch. So we were fortunate and we were blessed yeah. that we didn't have to go spend, you know, $225,000 all up front. When you guys are getting these trash cans, are you guys like advertising online? You're going door to door? Social media, we pass out flyers. We have door hangers, business cards, you know, anytime we're out, I, I, I like to call it the six pack because I, I did Marine Corps recruiting. And one of the things is when we went to somebody's house looking for somebody to join, it, we did a six pack. If they weren't home, then the six pack is going to the two houses next door and then the three houses across the street. So whenever we're cleaning trash bins, if the people around them aren't on the services yet, we'll go and we'll hang these little hangers on the trash bin itself so that when they come back, they'll see that. And hopefully they'll see our, our truck and the cameras because everybody has cameras nowadays, you know? <laughs> and be like, you know, what's going on? What's And when they hear our, our, our engine on, they're like, what's going on out there? And, people come fun. outside and, and look and we always have people be like hey you want to do mine next they're like yeah you can hire us <laughs> oh i thought you were doing it for the whole neighborhood they thought <laughs> the, the, the like republic or you know danger or the, the waste, waste management companies like, like they thought they were paying us to do it i'm like no this is an independent <laughs> company we're not anything associated with them so you know which brings up another great you know topic we have a, a great group of supporters and, and commercial trash companies out there that also you know support us and they give our number out to their customers and we also help provide cleaning for them at their facilities so we do we can do in a good in any given day with one load of water we can go up to a 500 bins in a day and what is the most that you have done in a day i did 420 with the trailer and the truck and then i went on a res we left there at two o'clock and left and started the residential route we did another 80 some bins so it's upwards of 600 in a day that's what so. the two go on and then for like the residential customers are they doing a month we have different subscriptions for people uh, that way you know whichever one fits their needs we have a monthly subscription that uh, it is $25 a month for the first bin and then $10 each additional bin and then we also have a quarterly so they're gonna get their trash bins cleaned once every three months and that's $45 and then $10 for an additional bin we do have the seasonal too the seasonal is mainly for like the yard waste bin because they only use yard waste from April to November so we we have that option and then we have the one time but our goal is to try to get everybody on a monthly subscription that way it's continuous because it's so much easier for us when we're doing a maintenance trash bin than one that's only cleaned every once in a while you know it just it goes a lot faster but the, the, the thing about it is all is a lot of people are like well I'm on a quarterly and by the time you come back it's really bad I'm like because you're not staying on top of it you're I get you're trying to save money and that's everybody's going like to save money but it's not going to do you any good to let it go three months of accumulation again and then you're gonna be on month two or three, you're gonna pay us for an extra cleaning because you can't handle it anymore. They tend to wanna do that, but then they're like, well, it don't stink as bad in the winter. I'm like, but it's also, not, if you, you gotta think about it like this, if you clean it through the winter, April, May starts rolling around, starts getting warmer like it is today, it's not going to stink because you're staying on top of it. And you're it. not gonna get those maggots. Like, you won't get the maggots, oh. correct. I mean, <laughs> we've seen some pretty bad ones people throw the kitty litter straight in there and that's like turns into concrete not only that but it extends the life of your bin it's been proven to keep the bin clean that it'll extend the life of it you won't be swapping it out as much you know so with that being said when you pay when you call the company to bring in another bin because three four years later it's already so bad that you can't use it anymore you don't want it in your garage a lot of these hoas require them to be in the garage they don't want them outside so what's it do it starts to get really bad well, not now you're paying them $65 to drop off another one and pick up your bad one. And then they're gonna still charge you a delivery free. Mm -hmm. So you're, you could be $75, $80 in the hole by the time you swap it out. So keep in mind, staying on top of it, it's gonna help that one, it stays clean, it's not gonna smell in your garage. And two, you, you can you know, be safe and with your kids walking by the can to get in their car. What's some of the biggest expenses that you guys have to deal with? Gas. Gas, <laughs> breakdowns. Um, we don't get many breakdowns, but uh, adding equipment to accommodate a new amenity or a new job is the biggest expense. We don't have much in the sanitizer, the EPA sanitizer we get from a local distributor that says EPA approved on it and has all the ingredients in there, it has a, the logging sheet. 
Mm. So we, we we know we could show that to the DOT if we get pulled over or whatever, that we have everything in hand. But I think the fuel is the biggest. I think right now we're about 1,650 a week. So we're, we're spending 60, we're running that much on the road that we're spending 1,600 bucks a week. Could you talk about what your plans are to like expand? This guy right here, he came up with another crazy idea of, uh, of franchising. And I'm like, whoa, man, you know, let's wait. Let's make sure that we're going to make it first. And, uh, you know, we, we were doing just right, you know, right off the, off the beginning, we were, we were doing really well. And uh, he saw a vision, and I'm not one to stop somebody from, from pursuing their visions. And he said, let's franchise. And I'm like, well, you know, we talked to a few lawyers and found out how much it was going to cost and everything. And I was like, yeah, I don't know if we could do that right now because they, they want some good money to, to start the franchise. And brought up the expenses immediately. With yeah. A key point, you know, in a business, so I run operations, Kenny handles the bucks. So he knows what's going on, what's coming in. And I tend to forget that sometimes because I'm so in tune in what the people want, what they're asking for and what, what we need to do to make us blow up. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I felt like I had numerous people tell me that and that the thought was already lingering in my head. Yeah, it was uh, July of 2022 that we got our, we got our first franchise. Initially, they were gonna stay here in, in uh, the, the south side, yeah, the, the south uh, Grand Rapids area, but then they decided to go down to Florida which was great because in Florida, everything is year round. Soft wash, surface cleaning, everything is year round in Florida. So they decided to go down there. In the meantime, like we were doing that, we, in the meantime, we were talking to a company that was helping us out to get all the franchising documents and all of our marketing materials, everything together. And uh, one of the things I asked him, I was like, uh, when he, he flew out here from Atlanta to talk with us and our wives and said, you know, why us? Why GI Benz? Out of all the companies out there, why do you want to represent GI Benz when it comes to franchising? And he said, well, because you guys have something that's unique that nobody else has. And during COVID, they learned one thing about franchises and that's that the brick and mortars got shut down. The ones that were out and doing services, they didn't get shut down. So that's what you want. they wanted to invest in is franchises that were providing some type of service. And especially with us, because we can sanitize, even if that were to come back, we would still be able to work because we're sanitizing. You know? And one of the things too was, you know, like we were getting requests and this was what really, I started looking at how much fuel I was putting, how much I was going there for that area. But you can't tell a customer that you're only 28 miles away from. No, because you want to stay in a condensed five mile radius. That's all great. But when you're a brand new business, you don't have the room to turn down customers. One thing I learned is, and Kenny brought it up, was like, is it worth going that far out? Well, in my opinion, I was seeing something that he wasn't, you know, cause he wasn't always going out with me. We, we, we had different schedules. So I was like, listen, man, every time I go out somewhere new, I, I have four more people ask me for business cards. If you turn down one job, 30 miles away, 28 miles away, it's costing you the potential of five more subscriptions, which is $320 mm. per prescription. Just depends on the one you pick. But I was like, I think we need to franchise it too, because my theory was if we can get somebody else to jump on board and we give them existing customers, they're using their equipment, their franchise, their business, they can stay in that area. So we're, we were essentially building the clientele of customers for our new franchisees that were coming along, mm. which we did a great job yeah. on. Yeah. So, and the thing is too, is people are like, well, why, why should I franchise why should I buy a franchise with GI Benz when I can go out and get my equipment on my own it's a the simple answer is because we're already established the name is already established so and then also you are getting clients already you know what businesses can you go into to start up on your own to where somebody is providing you with the clients before you even started if yeah. you look at it as why I want to purchase a franchise. First question is, is there enough people wanting to use that service in that area? Second, you know, is is it gonna pay my equipment loan? The two that we have here locally that are now taking off, we were giving them enough customers where we they were gonna their equipment loan was gonna be covered. I mean you can be anywhere between twelve hundred and three thousand a month upwards mm -hmm. of equipment costs and loans, not including insurance and all that. But the beauty of our system too is is that it it is very environmentally friendly but we also do a lot of water recovery jobs. We go to job businesses, recover water. Kenny did a flood not that long ago. Mm -hmm. um, so this isn't just a bin cleaning. You got to think about it, it's four businesses in one. We give you soft washing, 
concrete surface cleaning, bin cleaning, washing, just in general, fleet equipment, it's excavating equipment. So with that being said, you're you're rolling, you know, four or five businesses in, on wheels in one unit. So that was what set us apart. And I think people saw what we were saying. The other big thing is we're, we're, we're real people. We're, you, what you see is what you get. We're, we're not out to, you know, hurt anybody. And, and the last thing we want to do is have somebody come to us and they got families and kids to support. And we talk up a big game and then they fall on their face because if they fail, then we fail. We don't want to fail them. So we have two in Grand Rapids, one established in Florida on Anna Marie Island. Look them up if you guys go down there on the winter time, you know, look them up. But yeah, the GI Bins, you know, Anna Marie, GI Bins South, GI Bins Northeast, and then we're covering the lakeshore hopefully soon. We can stay out of the city limits and cover the lakeshore and do, we got enough work where, you know, we don't need all that area yeah. anymore. That's one of the things that's helping us out a lot too with these, with the two new franchises that are about to come. Grand Rapids South, if you look them up on Facebook, they just sent out their uh, post yesterday so that they can start to get their clientele before their equipment is even ready. Uh, they're gonna be covering from Kentwood Byron Center all the way down to Kalamazoo. And then we just got started on the Grand Rapids Northeast, pretty much where the, the 196 and the 131 interchange is. They're gonna be taking all that whole Northeast area as far as they can go. And we got a prospect for Nashville. Hopefully the other it'll two, go through. The other two <laughs> of the franchises we just recently sold, all veteran owned, 100%. We got uh, two Marines that are owners of the Grand Rapids South, and then we have a Navy veteran that is owners of the Grand Rapids Northeast. And our new one that's going hopefully here soon, I just got off the phone with them a couple days ago for Nashville, Tennessee, which we're yeah. pumped on that. I just want to go to Nashville. Yeah. That's our favorite place. I, I told Jose, I was like, hey, for any training events in Nashville, <laughs> I'm going. We're super stoked about him. He's also an Army veteran. Yeah. Um, and he's good dude. The, the benefits of, of us now franchising, especially a lot of, like one of the uh, guys was like, oh man, do you, are you sure that you want to franchise local? You know, that's taken away from you. Well, the, the thing is, is right now we cover from the lakeshore all the way to the other lakeshore on the other side of Michigan, you know? And this is gonna allow us to focus on specific areas to hopefully get a franchise there. And then we can move to another area and focus on those areas. All in the same time, we're right here local we can be assisting them but then at the same time going down to florida to help the franchise down there when they need it too i was just down there a couple weeks ago and we we're finding out that you know they're growing substantially a lot of people i went out one day with the franchisees and we were out promoting and, and driving around and passing out fire and one of the guys goes oh my gosh i just I seen you guys drive by the other day, so they know they're there already. And it's just a matter of when that first heat wave comes in and it starts to smell. He goes, yeah, we're just waiting for it because it's going to happen. Yeah. And we kind of talked a couple of people into just doing it now because you don't want to wait for it to happen. And then it's too late and it just smells and there's maggots all over it. But yeah, we're, we're definitely being noticed. I mean, we have all, all the social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and a TikTok. I did have a YouTube on there, but I haven't really gotten into that. Now, after this, I just might yeah. especially because for the Grand Rapids South franchisees they found us from YouTube yeah. the manufacturer had did a YouTube with our rig on it and he saw it and then he saw that I was a part of it and I helped him join the Marine Corps so he was like oh man it's like full circle here helping him out but like with with TikTok my brother he's in California and one Saturday morning he was sitting in bed you know doing what everybody does when they wake up start flipping through TikToks you know and then he was watching one of our TikToks and he turned to his wife and was like, man, look at this, isn't this cool? And then she looked at him and she goes, stupid? You know, your brother owns that company, right? <laughs> and he's like, what? And he'd always been commenting before, you know, on our, on our stuff. But I would, whenever I would comment back, it would be under the GI Ben's account. So yeah. he didn't really know what was going on. And then he called me, I was like, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah and then I was trying to, trying to get him to get yeah. something up in Hesperia, yeah. California. We've <laughs> actually been, I, I was in the oil fields for 13 years and I've actually had a lot of people reach out to me that are like interested in the franchise and they're like, dude, this is amazing, bro. Like, this, how'd you figure this out? Like, you know, it was already there. I I, I mean, like every person, they want to say they came up with the idea. I can't say that. I'm, I'm going to be truthful. So it was already established. It's just nobody had introduced it into our city. There was another company that tried it, but they went a different direction with their company because they were a dumpster rollout company as well. So it was here. They were only in business for what, less than two years? So now we're here we are and we're, we're blowing it up. I mean, I 
think they could have been bigger, but they went a different direction in their company. And we just, this is what we wanted to do, That's focus it. on. But we have, we're pushing six, 700 customers that we've served already in the area, continuing to serve them. We have a lot of repeat customers, a lot of, we have people that do one-timer. But not only that, but after this, I'm headed up to Cedar Springs where a year ago, he gave a business card to a, a lady, a, bit, a homeowner. She's having us go up there to possibly wash her house. Yep. And that's from a year ago. So you never know, they, they may not be your customers right then and there, but down the line, eventually they're gonna end up yeah. remembering who you are and then giving you a call so you can do some business with them. A, a lead is never a dead lead. I mean, just because you dropped off a card to a business or a commercial account, you may think they forgot about you, but I've found in situations where I walk back in eight months later to the same business, Oh no, we still have it. And he pulls out his card from behind it. It's on his computer screen, like clipped on the side. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't forget it. Like it's it's never a dead lead. A lot of people just give up. I have no no giving up in me. Mm -hmm. Like I'm very persistent. Um, it can be a good thing and a bad thing, I guess. But I mean, that's uh, that's the way it is with this business, though. I mean, it, with, with this business, somebody tried to compare it to like um, buying a franchise with like a, a car wash. If you buy a, a franchise with a car wash, cars are going to be driving by and they're going to see it and be like, oh. I need to wash my car. And then they're gonna go in. With this business, you have to have that hustle. You gotta get out there and you have to find those those customers. They're, they're gonna see you somewhere because of something that you did. Correct. They're not gonna just drive by and be like, oh, there's GI Benz, let me turn around and get my house washed. It's all about the, the hustle that you have. You, you have to have the dedication. You have to be disciplined too, because any type of job where you're your own boss, you have to have that discipline to wake up in the morning, take a shower, strap on them boots and get out there and work. It doesn't just stop that. Okay, I purchased the equipment. I got my LLC. Now let's wait for the million to start landing in our lap. It don't work like that. A lot of people don't know this, but we're out of the house at seven. And last night I didn't get in my door till 10, 15. After bins, we go do washing, fleet washing. I'm constantly working so that way the cash flow doesn't stop coming in so our business can survive. We're a small company. You know, we're compared to a, a big company that's I recognize, like McDonald's. If I was in the food chain industry, I, I'd have to work really hard at it because I got McDonald's two blocks away from me. You know, it doesn't stop there. So, with that being said, you know, don't stop, don't give up, be persistent, and just keep on going. A lot of businesses fail. We're two and a half years old. A year into it, I knew we weren't going to fail. I was already convinced, and that was part of the reason why we didn't purchase the truck because I didn't want to spend the extra hundred grand on a truck <laughs> until we knew we were going to be good. But eight months into it, I was like, man, I think we're going to be good. And then we have we have great spouses that are very, very supportive of us, too. So and they don't stop hustling either. They do what they do best. They're, they're on their social media. And they'll share what we share. They'll keep, you know, sharing the GI Ben brand. And and we are a brand now. A lot of I get people that Monica. actually <laughs> hit me up on TikTok saying, hey, I've seen them a GI Ben before somewhere else. And I'm like, oh really, where? I just had one from Tampa hit me up and they saw our GI Ben Florida location when they went to the beach in Anna Marie Island <laughs> one weekend. And they're like, oh, and you're in Michigan? And I'm like, yeah, we're the original owners. So then I shared the, the TikTok page because I share on my TikTok page, everything GI Ben's. Kenny does all the GI Ben's here. So it's nice that we actually have two because it created more traffic to the GI Ben brand. What's one of the most profitable days that you guys have? I would say it's when we did the association, the 120 trash bins in three hours. Yeah, three. it was three and a half roughly. But yeah, it was right around there. So we did 122 trash bins in three and a half hours at $22 a bin. So I think when we did the math, it was about 800 and like 60 something dollars an hour. But that was our more profitable day. And it could have been better because it was not our only job that day. So I don't remember the what we did on a residential route or what we had else going on. But yeah, it could have easily been a thousand dollars a day job or better. And, and cause it wasn't even a full eight hour day. Mm -hmm. So if we were doing, I think that's 35 bins an hour. If we were doing that in an eight hour day, that's a significant amount of money. So I did the math right, yeah. I'd have to do it, but yeah, you could have done five grand in a day. And can you expect those numbers Often. Yeah, the numbers are going to fluctuate depending on the individual business. You know, if you're if you're the business owner that's going to get out there and get multiple associations lined up, then yes, it could happen more often than not. Right now, we have a few associations that we do twice a year in the spring and in, in the fall. And those are great days when we do that because we're not spending as much time driving from address to address. 
where everything is secluded right there. So we're able to knock them out faster and then move on to the ones that are a little bit further away from each other and make even more. With that being said too, we, with our commercial accounts too, we've gone in there and killed it. I think we made five grand in a day one time between commercial and residential. And that was with one unit. And we didn't have the truck yet. That was just our trailer. We have had some good good days under our belt. But also you you get your slow days too. If you're not out hustling and chasing down leads and getting work for two weeks ahead of time, you could always have enough work and think at the moment, oh I got enough work to keep me busy. But then in three weeks goes by and you catch up but you weren't hustling, chasing down the next lead. So now a month from now, you don't got nothing, yeah. you're slow. So you get that $12,000 a month net, and then you get the next month, you've got $4,000. Yeah, so. the, the, the good thing I like about uh, having Jose as my business partner is that he talks about hustle and he does. There's times where we don't have anything on the schedule and I call him and be like, hey dude, what are you doing? He's like, oh, driving the truck around, advertising, yeah. handing out business yeah. cards, passing out flyers, talking to business owners. Yeah. So it's like, even though you don't have anything to clean on the schedule, you still have something to do. You have to get out there, you have to promote your business because nobody's gonna promote your business for you better than you.